let's get this thing started. It is 9.15. That's our uh, time. Okay, the, the, for the uh, tickets, we're, we, we're going to do a, a little raffle this year. Uh, Mike Marsh, uh, K4QU, donated a plaque. Stick that on your wall or, you know, whatever you want to. It's pretty nice. And then uh, I've made up some packets. Every year we've done the free Drake pens. So in the packet there's, I don't know, three, four, five Drake pens of the previous ham fest. So I've got uh, five packets of those. So all total we got uh, six raffle tickets that will be drawn. Okay. I've got to do this the old-fashioned way here. Okay, uh, Ron Baker was on here, and his wife is in for an operation today. So Jeff has volunteered to uh, do his, his uh, uh, presentation. Uh, Jeff's on here, WNSAJ, uh, and Evan, I was hoping he'd be here, but uh, he's, uh, he's a caregiver for his wife and didn't feel comfortable about leaving her. So uh, he, he apologizes for not uh, being here. Uh, we're going to, the agenda, we're going to do a, a quick, just a survey, and then um, uh, we're going to uh, go over reoccurring technical questions on the Drake Technical Net. That uh, meets uh, uh, Sundays at 4 p.m. Uh, it seems like there's always a reoccurring, those reoccurring questions. Uh, questions that most users would be able to resolve on their own, but uh, they keep popping up. So we thought, well, yeah, we'll, we'll go do a back to basics type thing. So, uh, and, then, and then Ron's part was going to be common and easy fixes for the Drake for, uh, Ford 7 line. So Jeff will be uh, doing those right now. And then hopefully at the end we'll have, I keep saying this, you know, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. It seems like we always run out of time, but we'll, we'll try and do a better job this time. Uh, so here, uh, uh, I'm always asking for suggestions of future uh, forum pro uh, subjects. Hey, and real quick, I forgot to introduce myself. Uh, Mark, WB0IQK. Anyway, uh, always asking for suggestions for future forum uh, subjects. Uh, if you've got something to present, uh, we're always uh, looking for uh, presenters. And if you want to contact me with any ideas or volunteer, uh, there's my email address, wb0iqk at net or at gmail.com or whatever the gmail address is. Just a little quick Drake trivia. We did this last year. Uh, the first Drake forum uh, was held in, a quick, a quick answer, anybody? Jeff, I know you know this, but in 1998. So we've been going for uh, quite a while now. Uh, it was started by uh, Don Spillman and uh, Danny Schrader. Uh, so this is the 19th year. And uh, what year uh, was the Drake and Antique Tube Net started on 3865? Uh, it was, well, it was started in 94 by Danny Schrader and Jeff uh, Weinberg. And Jeff is set up out in the uh, flea market, the muddy flea market. So if you've got any, uh, any needs to upgrade your uh, amplifiers or, or anything like that, uh, he's out there. Also, uh, Mike Bryce is out there for the AC4R R upgrades for your power supply. He's in the same aisle as Jeff is in. So anyway, uh, that's 23 years for, uh, for that. Uh, the 40-meter Drake technical net was started by John, KB9AT, and Jeff, W8SAJ, 1999. And the 40 meter tech net, if you guys, anybody doesn't know, that's uh, at 4 p.m. We converted, we changed over last year from, uh, or the year before actually from, uh, uh, we were on uh, 2000 Zulu, but we changed over to Eastern time to get away from the broadcast station, which we always seem to have a conflict with and still do in some cases. Uh, but that's on at 4 p.m. on Sundays. Uh, let's see, that's on 7.238. 7.238. Oh, and I should say that the, uh, 
antique tube and swap net, the Drake antique tube swap net that's on Tuesday evenings on 75 meters on 3.865, 3.865, and that's 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, oh, that's on Tuesday, Tuesday evening. Okay, a couple quick resources. Uh, we got the Drake Dutton that which we just covered, and the Antique Tube and Swap Net we just covered. Uh, the West Coast, uh, anybody in here from the West Coast that checks into the West Coast Net? Okay, there's uh, 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 Peter back there and a few others, but uh, uh, that started up a couple years ago. I don't know how, how good it's going or not, but that might be a good one to uh, try and check into. And again, we always uh, say that if you don't have the uh, family affair, you need to get that book. Real good reading on the uh, history of Drake, and there's some uh, technical uh, uh, questions, or not questions, but uh, uh, answers to t uh, common uh, Drake questions in there. Oop. Okay, let's see here. Some, not all, of the reoccurring type questions that, that we always seem to get, uh, you know, where can you get tubes? Uh, where's the best place to get tubes, let's say? Uh, what mic works best on the four lines? Uh, should a fan be added to my four line? Can I replace the number 47 bulbs with LEDs? Uh, what can I do about the hum in, the, in my transmit signal? Should I replace caps in the L4 and L7? Hey, what's the difference between an L4 and an L4B? Uh, receive uh, signal strength slow. What do I do about it? Uh, TR7 digital display intermittent or dead questions uh, crop up. And can the L4 or L7 be keyed from a solid state radio? Okay, I, I only listed four on this slide. This slide has a lot of them, but these are the four that I like is uh, ESCR down in Florida, great. Uh, and then vacuum tube net. Um, uh, and the Nebraska Surplus Sales and RF uh, Parts Company, all good, uh, uh, and they have an excellent supply of tubes, especially your, your uh, finals. Uh, these are other ones, and, and all this information can be found on Ron's webpage at wb4hfn.com. Okay, so what's, what's the best uh, microphone? <laughs> What is the best microphone to use? Boy, this is, uh, it's based on your, your, your audio, you know, your, your tone, or where you, you uh, are in the audio spectrum. Sometimes, some people sound better on D104, some people sound better on Shure microphones, but you know, my preference is the D104 or the Shure 444. Uh, those are my two preferences. Uh, uh, Shure makes a, a Shure 522. This is a current, you can get this new from Amazon. So you don't have to get an, an old D104 or an, or an old Shure 444. Uh, Shure 450, get those from Amazon. Uh, the 444D, that's an old microphone, real good. Uh, Shure uh, Turners, the 454C and the 454X microphones. And uh, those uh, you need to uh, add 100 to 150 ohm series uh, uh, to improve the uh, audio response on those, and a Turner 454C. So all those mics all work good on the uh, Drake four lines. <clears throat> uh, the microphone plugs. Where in the Dickens do you get those small? Those are 0.21 inch uh, microphone plugs. Uh, there's a couple of places, but I still put Mauser on here. I wasn't going to, uh, and, and this information along with three or four other uh, places uh, can be found on Ron's web page also. Uh, here's, the, it's a Swiss, Switchcraft S320. Now that's the right angle, so that's like this guy, which you'd want to use with the TR4 uh, because that's on the side. If you go with the straight one on the TR4, your, your cabinets are going to be like uh, three, four inches uh, separated from each other. So you want a right angle plug for the TR4 uh, uh, or TR3 series. For the T4Xs, you can use the straight plug there because that plug's in the back. Um, so there's no problem about clearance on that one. And then you get those at several different places. Uh, I, on my equipment, and I know a lot of other guys, 
Uh, so you can standardize, you can you just use one microphone, you can switch it between all your other radios without not having to plug, plug it in. You know, make a, a, a small cord uh, 6 to 12 inches long, and you buy a, a female, uh, ha a quarter inch connector, so then you're going to put quarter inch plugs, stereo plugs, on your microphones. And you only need, uh, well, depending on how many radios you have, you're going to make up one of these cables for each radio. So 0.21 inch. Uh, through the cable to a quarter inch stereo plug, which you can get anywhere, and you're going to have one of those for each one of your radios. And then, that way you only need one microphone, you're not plugging it in the, uh, uh, the radio every time you want to use it. And uh, which pins do you wire the low impedance microphone into a TR7? Microphone, you can uh, tight. Yes. Backwards? I figured that. Okay, so. Uh, there's two pins to wire the microphone into. So here I have the high impedance on pin one is actually pin four. Okay, and if you got a low impedance one, that would be on uh, pin one. So basically all they're doing is adding a resistor inside the radio to, to get the right impedance. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Okay, should you add a fan to your four lines? Definitely yes. You know, should it be blown in or out? You always want it to blow out. LED lamps. You know, I want to replace my number 47's bulbs with number 40, uh, with uh, LEDs. Not a good idea, but it's your radio. If you're going to do it, you know, you're going to end up doing it anyway, no matter what we say. Uh, so if you're going to do with the uh, LED lamp replacements, use a small fuse in there. You can buy these, uh, they're called little Pico or Pico fuses from Mauser or, or ma many different places, all the, the values, but they're just the size of a quarter, a quarter watt resistor. Wire that in series with each light you put in and that will protect you. And what I mean by protect is, Jeff has uh, mentioned several times on the net that he's gotten radios into repair uh, that have switched over to LED lights. For whatever reason, the LED light shorts, and he's found how many burn-up harnesses? Yep, two TR4 harnesses that burn up, which makes the radio uh, non-repairable unless you want to put hours and hours into uh, fixing that. Yeah, wiped out a Collins transformer because of the LEDs uh, uh, shorted out. Okay. I think most of them are just getting the ones that are already in the sockets. Yeah, they just, just plug in. Yeah, if you go with that, you can buy the, uh, the, uh, the, the blue LED replacement. Just plugs right in the socket. Get your soldering gun out. You take the uh, solder off the, med mid the middle pin on the existing uh, number 47 socket, and you wire in your little Pico fuse. You don't need to use a Pico fuse. You're going to put a regular fuse in there, but you're going to have this thing like this in there for a, for a simple 47 bulb, so you might as well make it small. Uh, TR4 hum. Well, if you haven't upgraded your AC4, you need to do that first thing off. And if, 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 even if your hum is okay, you still need to do this upgrade. Because heaven forbid, it happened to me once, I think it's happened to Jeff on some of his radios, if you lose the bias supply, let's say the capacitor goes out, or the diode goes out, well, in addition to uh, five or six dollars worth of parts for the new capacitor and new diodes, you've also got the cost of either th three or two, depending on which radio you have, uh, finals. And those things are twenty-five, thirty-five dollars a piece now. So now your bill goes up over a hundred dollars. Excuse me? Yeah, it could blow up a plate meter. So where are you going to get a new plate meter at here, guys? So do the upgrade even though everything is working fine, you know, now. You've got a TR3 and all the same thing. You can upgrade the TR3 with, uh, with this. Okay, hey, I've upgraded my AC4 power supply. Why do I still have hum? Well, a couple of different things here. 
the uh, plug on the back of the radio. Did you clean that? Put a little bit of deoxid on it or contact cleaner. And not only this plug, but do the uh, female plug on the cable. You know, put just a drop will do it on each, each one of the pins. And then you're going to put that on and you're going to reseed it uh, you know, half a dozen times or so. A lot of times that'll uh, clean up your hum. And I think, yeah, you can add a ground wire between the, the radio and the AC4 because in this cable, there's only, I think, one wire that provides the ground. So it's a good idea just to add an extra wire, and, and sometimes that'll reduce your hum or eliminate it. Okay, so the capacitor, this is a TR4. You're going to find that guy right there is the main culprit if you still got hum in addition to. Oh, that's the only one I got on there, but I think there's a couple of uh, small uh, electrolytics in underneath the chassis also that need to be replaced out. Yeah, the cathode capacitor. Okay, uh, AC4 upgrades. Well, there's a couple of them out there. You know, which one do we do? Which one's the best? Well, there's, I, I've got to say there's not a best one. It's up, it's up to how much time you want to invest in doing, you know, your upgrade. Mike has been around for the longest at the Heathkit shop. And Mike Bryce is out in, in the uh, flea market there if you want to buy an AC4R kit. In this kit, don't be, if you haven't done any soldering in years, don't be worried. On a scale of 1 to 10, this is probably a difficulty factor of 2 or 3. It's real simple. Now, the hardest part is getting the old capacitors out. You've got to have a good hot soldering gun to take the old capacitors out. And on mics, you only need to take out capacitors on, on one side of the AC4. You don't have to take out both of them. Where the one that Herbach sells, uh, you have to take out capacitors on both sides. And no big deal. Just you know, more time uh, demounting the, uh, the old capacitors. Yeah. Mm. OK, so Jeff's saying just, uh, just clip them out and uh, through some effort, uh, they'll, they'll come out without uh, unsoldering. This is what Mike's board looks like at the Heathkit shop. So it mounts on the side of the transformer. Uh, this is the one that Harbach sells, and these come assembled. That's the advantage of this guy over Mike's. It's, Mike's is a kit. This is already assembled. So if you don't trust yourself anymore to, to solder, well, this is the one you want to go with then. But you got to remove the capacitors on both sides. And then the third one is uh, Hayseed Hamfest. They make capacitors now for a lot of the, the, the old radios. And Jeff is probably keeping this guy in business with all the capacitors he buys to when he gets a radio in for repair. So uh, original, original type uh, caps where you remove the old one, you just hook the wires back up to the new ones, and you're off and running. Well, if you got an L4 and L7, uh, the same thing. The L4R that's sold by Mike, the Heathkit shop, that's uh, Mike's board right there. Excellent design, works great. And the one sold by Harbach, right there. So uh, I upgraded mine, I guess, probably 10 years ago. Haven't had an ounce of problem with it, works great. OK, another problem, or a question that, that comes up occasionally, well, I got What's the difference? Uh, there's an L4 on eBay, or should I do an L4B, whatever? Uh, so Evan worked up this little table here. And the main difference is the L4 used three 500Zs, where the L4B used three 500Zs. OK, you can, move, you can have three 500Zs over here, and, and that, this amplifier is, gosh, you know, ages old now. The previous user might have stuck three 500Zs in there, so you open it up. There, you know, it's no big deal. They're 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 ch interchangeable. But I would say, you know, this tube is much easier to get these days than the three 400s. Three 400s getting pretty hard to find. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so if you got an L4 and you, got, and you want to put three 500Zs, you're not going to be able to use the chimney because the, the tube height. So you just uh, go to uh, 
a camping store and you get the, the uh, uh, Coleman lantern uh, glass and that works. And this information can also be found on, on the chimney and the part numbers and stuff like that can be found on Ron, Ron's web page also. Uh, oh, the L4 didn't have a watt meter. Okay. Okay. So L4B has a watt meter, built-in watt meter where the L4 did not. How are we doing on time here? Oh, we got all kinds of time. Uh, what, what I decided to do, I did a lot of these uh, flow charts up uh, in, in my previous life when I was working. So I figured, uh, these, some of these common probs, it might be nice to stick them on Ron's webpage for a new user that comes online with not, uh, not a lot of experience. You know, he can, he can follow these through. They're, they're not meant for guys that have been around this for a long time. You know, you'd be bored and, and probably find a dozen mistakes in any one of these drawings. This is for a newbie, okay, to kind of walk them through and maybe he could stumble on the, uh, the right answer. Or at least get down to a certain point where he knows, well, now I can get on the net and I can say I did this, this, and this, and, you know, where do I go next? So Ron's going to post um, these uh, when I feel comfortable sending them to, me, to him. Uh, what is this particular one on? Oh, look, low signal flow. This one comes up all the time. Guys, in a uh, TR4, you can, first off, you get the, uh, the antenna relay. You know, you might want to clean that. There's a bulb in there, though. And that bulb will blow. If you got another transmitter in line and you, you forget to throw your antenna switch over to the ground to position, that excess RF that's in that, your, your shack there in your line can cause this to blow. I've seen, in, in my case, I was using um, BMW, uh, I don't know how many positions, four, six position uh, switches originally, and I just happened to have my radio out. I was doing something to it, and I, and I was on another radio talking, and I, I caught this flashing. What's this flashing coming from? And that little bulb was, was flashing in, in the radio there, just from the excess uh, of RF that was getting into because I was using the cheap, cheap antenna switches. So after that, I replaced every antenna switch that I have in there with Alpha Deltas, and those are great switches. So if you're using something chintzy, you know, spend a few extra bucks and get some Alpha Deltas. So anyway, that could be blown. Um, oh, I can't see that. Oh, the slide switch on the side. <laughs> that can get just plain old gunked up and dirty uh, or if you've slid something in or sli slip the, uh, slide the uh, TR4 out, that switch will go in the wrong position and you completely forget about it. Yeah. Yep, so if you set the radio on the left side and you're kind of moving it around a little bit, what I like to do is I'll put a, put a little tie wrap uh, and you can wedge it in that switch so it can't go in anything other than the on position, because just it's just something that always happens. Anyway, so your RF comes through, comes through, and eventually it's going to get to the RF coils. And, and we always tell you, well, how does your signal sound with your crystal, crystal calibrator on? Oh, it's 20 over S9. Well, then you know that everything after that is OK then. Okay, so you got a problem up here. If you've already replaced the bulb or put a jumper in there for testing, then you know you probably want to concentrate on an antenna relay. Anyway, here's one on uh, another one on uh, low uh, low receive signal. Takes you a little bit farther, and I'm not going to bother going through all this stuff. Could it all be on the website wb4hfm.com? Unless somebody has a, a particular question after, afterwards, we can go into that. Uh, okay, here's one on the TR7. One of the problems that comes up is your digital display. Everything seems to be working. So the digital display has kicked off, and or it's it's fluttering, or or some weird thing. Oh, well, I'm going to throw the radio away or send it off to be repaired. Well, before you send it off to be repaired. There's some simple steps, and it mainly deals with just removing this board and cleaning the contacts. That board plugs in. In addition, 
Well, let's see. I've got them pointed out here, I thought, someplace. But, yeah, right here. Uh, there's different points where cables plug in this board. So you're going to pull that off, put a little, just a drop of deoxid on the pins, and you're going to reseat that connector a half a dozen times. That might fix it. Okay, if not, you're going to, uh, first off, that, um, that normally sits right in here. Uh, you're going to go to the regulator board, and, and there's a couple of critical voltages there that you're going to reset. I'm not, I don't know, Diddly Squad, about the TO4. I already sent it off to Jeff to be repaired, but go ahead, Joe. Yeah, so it's the same thing like a TR4. It, that switch just sits in that position for forever and ever, so exercise a little bit, maybe a drop of deoxid. I need to add this to this, I guess. I didn't think about that. So anyway, if you got a TR7, you've been starting to have a little funny, you turn it on, and 10 minutes later, it, it starts to act funny or it starts to get better. You know, a sim simple flow diagram here might help you out. Okay, so there, there's where that board sits. Um, and there's a bigger picture showing the uh, the five points that yeah, just cycle them in, in and out. And there's the 10 volts. That's the, that's a critical one. And that pot just can get dirty. So you just exercise it a little bit, and if you can get it back on and it stays on 10 volts, that's probably good enough. Or you just uh, again, I like deoxid. One little drop will go a long ways. Yeah, and and Jeff always likes to make a recommendation that uh, blow it out afterwards, so you don't so the excess, especially when you're dealing with the uh, uh, the uh, band switches, uh, blow the excess out. And there's where that board, the power supply sits in there, so it's easy to get to. Oops, wrong key here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, there's four boards down here. You pull the um, you pull the uh, digital board out. There's four boards down here that need to be reseat reseated or and or clean with the oxid on the connectors that that the boards plug into. So you got the digital board, you got the transmit exciter board, you got an up converter board, and you got the VCO board. All those are right there. Easy to do. The hardest part is the part is getting the the, uh, the digital display board out. Cross or bend, yeah. That happened to me once. I stuck the board in, and I, I don't know how, but one of the pins got bent a little bit, and I had to straighten it out. Makes you feel real good. Um, okay, uh, this goes with uh, keying of your amplifier. Uh, this happened to me. I, I got a, a Kenwood uh, TS-130, and it wouldn't key my L4B. Uh, what do I do? Well. I installed this. This is his current version, a UKA3. I have a UKA2 in mine. So you interface all of your radios through this board, and the output of this, or the input, however you want to think about it, uh, goes to the L4B. The other side goes to all of your radios. And you can do that through you know, some uh, A, B, C, D, you know, computer switches or whatever type of switch you want to use. And you just switch to radio goes into this guy, but this, uh, and also Mike Bryce, he sells a, uh, a board that does the same thing, and there's probably a half a dozen companies out there, but that'll fix that problem. You know, you don't want to stop using your, your L4B just because it's uh, uh, 40, 40 plus years old or whatever. Uh, update it. This can be mounted inside, but it's easier just to mount it outside. I have mine slapped to the back wall uh, behind uh, where my amplifiers sit. Uh, oh, and this is made by Hand Gadgets. Okay, and this is the point, Jeff, where Ron would be here, but again, Ron can't make it. So, you want to? <laughs> yeah. Well, you you probably going to do a lot better than I would have done. Okay. You want me to do the uh, computer? Yeah. Why don't you do that? Hello. Okay. I'm Jeff W A eight S A J. Let me get over here, Mark. Uh, yeah, let me do that. You can hear me, everybody? Okay, good. All right. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, boy. Let me see. I'll just stand here. How's that? Okay, there we go. 
uh, topics. Okay, go ahead, Mark. Do the next. Uh, uh, let me go beep. Yeah. Okay, TR4 tube shields. Uh, you only need tube shields, actually. This is what? This is a... Yeah, you don't even need a tube shield here. They don't need to be on here. Uh, okay, according to service bowl and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you don't need it there. Uh, go ahead, next one, Mark. Uh, all temperatures will cause temperature. Yeah. Keep shields off, right, yeah. Because they got a deal on these sockets. I think that's why they bought them. You got to remember, manufacturers try to make save money, and they did. Uh, Jim told me that, Kate MSN, he was one of the parts procurers for Drake. One of the reasons why the six JB6s were used, or 12 JB6s back years ago. Yeah, so you don't need tube shields there. I see a lot of TR6s with them, man. Okay. Uh, yeah, the IF tubes, you definitely need them. Yeah. It'll work without it, but it's best to have them on. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, uh, did you, uh, Harbach is out. That's Jeff. Uh, uh, he, he's out in the flea market. He has these, uh, these relays. And... Uh, along with the other kits and that. It's a 48 volt relay. In fact, here it is, uh, 2.5K. Now, on the early T4XCs and the early TR4s, they used a 15K relay, and the uh, coils would actually uh, prematurely open up. So that has to be replaced with one of the 2.5Ks uh, on the later models and a resistor, a 1.5K added in series with it. I believe there's a service bolt out there, and I don't know if he's got it on there or not. If not, I can send it to you for the uh, upgrade to the 2.5K. So that's for the T4XCs, early version, and a TR4Cs, uh, early version. Go ahead, Mark. And uh, he also has the uh, relays for the... Uh, oh, and the TR4, uh, Harbuck, is it Harbuck? Yeah, Harbuck has a kit. Is the kit in here? Okay. Oh, all right. All right, here we go. Let's go back to... Go, go ahead. Uh, but uh, on the relay, but if you need an old TR4, you want to put a relay in, Harbach sells a kit that plugs in, it solders in for a retro kit for the new relay, plug-in relay, and a T4XB uh, or a T4X. And TR3, right, and the early TR4s. A total TR series, uh, f uh, threes and fours, was about uh, 10 different versions of those radios. So it's, uh, it's amazing. Uh, Open frame relay, you don't want to get in there and monkey with it because the spring, there's no spring in there. They use the actual metal. Uh, it's kind of like pre-sprung. If you go in there and start monkeying with the thing, you're going to end up making it worse than, than what it is before. Uh, if you've got a $100 bill in your back pocket, put it in between there, that might work. You can use a, a single if you want, but 100 works real nice. But just rub it in and out a little bit, and then, believe it or not, that actually works, especially an old bill, you know. You got a lot of them, Mark, right? In the backyard? Yeah. Okay. These little lights here, uh, fortunately, I had a bunch manufactured by, uh, oh, wow, uh, what's his name? Uh, <laughs> uh, not Danny, no. No, not Don, Donnie Gary. Oh, yeah, he did make some. In fact, he just emailed me the other day. He's alive and well. His wife is uh, in bad shape, though. Anyway, uh, you could polish these up. The problem is they go uh, pink after a while, especially the later models. The early TR4s were great, but the material here, to get red material is tough. Uh, the guy down uh, that used to be uh, make parts, the front panel guy, what's his name? <laughs> anyway, he made, yeah, Tony Mills, he had made these and I bought hundreds of them from him, so I've got these, but I don't sell them. I just replace them automatically when one comes in. Um, there's a lot of heat in here, and you do not glue these. You have to, uh, if you ever get any uh, replacements, uh, you could take an old LED and maybe cut it and kind of stuff it in there and just melt it on the back and take a big, bright flashlight. Uh, and if it passes light, then you can use that. You know, an old red LED or any kind of red material, as long as the light passes through it, you could replace these. I guess uh, uh, Ron's been trying to polish them up. Rubs his fingernail? Well, you can try that, too. Yeah, because it's the front. It's the front that goes bad. That's what happens. Go ahead, Mark. Next. Okay, there's a slide switch that, that can go bad. If you're going to work on your TR4, put it on the right side. That way that switch doesn't get damaged. If you have to put it on the left side, get yourself a rubber, um, uh, something rubber or something or a piece of wood so that this doesn't get pushed down and breaks because it will break or go intermittent on you. Okay, Mark. 
There's the bulb. Now this bulb can go intermittent. Uh, you can just rub it in and out. Put a little deoxid on here, rub it in and out, and these are available. You can get them from Mauser, I believe. Uh, in a pinch, you could use a six volt, six and a half volt, uh, one of those peanut bulbs. You know, you get it, uh, used to get a Radio Shack. Uh, you could even use a 12 volt one, but a six volt or a 12 volt, any one of those, and just kind of solder it right here and here. That'll work fine. Grain of wheat bulb. Yeah, yeah, grain of wheat bulb. So you don't have to get this exact bulb. It's not that critical, but it will save. Oh, there's that 1.5K relay I was telling you about. For the relay, there's a 2.5K newer relay. This is in series with this relay. So there's about 250 volts here. There's a resistor here, uh, one watt. And there's also a 200 or a, a 22 ohm, I believe there it is right there. This opens up, make that a one watt resistor. Those open up, uh, that's something that uh, probably you guys didn't know. That's quite common. There's a resistor right here that's, uh, I think, 22 ohm. It's a limiting resistor for the 250 volt line. So you want to make that a one watt resistor. Okay, Mark. Uh, oh, that's for the R4. Yeah, on the R4, yeah, a lot of times a guy will call up and say, oh, my R4 doesn't work. And uh, that's uh, something to check, too, the slide switch. You can just loosen that and run it back and forth. Okay, Mark. Uh, what are we looking at here? Mute? Okay, will not mute. Okay, R4 here does not mute properly. Uh, what I do on a mute problem, usually the mute uh, socket, I think, is right here. Just take the cord that's on the back of the R4 and just put it to ground and see if it mutes it. Um, leaking open, okay. Well, any kind of filter capacitor you want to replace, like on the R4 series, you got a uh, four section right here, and there's a couple others in here. There's one underneath this calibrator that has to be replaced, this one here, and a couple others. So you go ahead and replace it, and this one right here, you definitely want to replace it, yep. There they are right here, yep. AC hum, yeah, definitely. There's one for the calibrator under here too, a lot of people don't know about. You might get 60 cycle on your calibrator, it's, uh, it goes across here in the back. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, but that, uh, you're, okay, Mark. Uh, okay, here on the TR7, this is, uh, I'm, I'm glad uh, he brought this up. This is quite common. They use a, a piece of wire that goes across here. This is your uh, VCO voltage, 24 volts, and it has to be pretty close to 24 volts or else the VCO won't work. And uh, this is just two pieces, and uh, you can use a, uh, a piece of wire going through here, or you, what you can do is use a tie wrap. That's what I use. You go, it'll slide right underneath here, up and over, and as long as this is touching that, just like that, you can see it. That's how I do mine. Okay, Mark. Uh, replacement meter. Boy, I don't know about that. Uh, don't monkey with this thing. That's all I can tell you. Leave it alone. Because uh, if the guy wants to take the meter out, and this is a double shielded, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the MN2000. This thing is built like a tank. Milt Sullivan, boy, he just, he, uh, he built everything uh, like a tank. And this is double shielded inside here. There's another shield. And there's a shield in here, in the back of this. It's just a real pain in the rear end. You have to uh, work on it. The MN2700 was uh, built a lot cheaper. Okay, Mark. Yeah, same thing with the W4. Sacrifice the W4, okay. Yeah, they use common uh, meters. Uh, you can do that. Uh, just like your plate meter and your S meter, they're swappable depending on the uh, current rating. And you have to kind of have to experiment back and forth and you can just change out. Uh, go to the next one and see what he's got. Oh, I guess not, okay. Uh, simple repairs. Yeah. Uh, chimney loss of floor, yeah. Yeah, check that blower in the back of the L4B. Uh, make sure it's turning. And don't get your hands back there while it's on because there's high voltage on that uh, jumper. And it goes from the uh, main cinch Jones plug, which is right about here, over to the back. While this thing's on, you don't want to get your fingers back there just in case that thing ever comes out of the socket because you'll, you'll get zapped, no doubt about it. And the blades hurt. Yeah, the blades are hurt, yeah. Yeah. That's why I don't work on amps anymore. Um, these don't go bad too often. These are the filament, uh, I think, point ones at, uh, I forget the rating, 600 volt feed throughs, but they can go bad. Uh, shorter to ground. Were they bad? Yeah. They say, uh, that can happen. Uh, Nebraska Sales, I think, has them. I think, yeah, you just do a Google. You know, Google has all the answers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I believe that, uh, back, back one more, uh, Mark. Uh, this is the shield on the MN2000 also, the L4B. The MN2000 has that same shield on it because the RF's right here. 
they really uh, did a lot of extra shielding on that. Um, okay, go ahead, Mark. And this foam, you can just buy regular sticky foam, double sticky tape foam, get that replaced. Just take that all off, scrape it off real good, and make sure it's in the same exact spot as the old, and put new foam in here. That'll make a big difference for air cooling because they pressurize from the f bottom up. The L7, they take air from the top out and hope to God that the air comes up from the bottom. I, I'm not a fan of the L7 cooling, but that's my opinion. Go ahead, Mark. I like pressurizing. Uh, is this the uh, L4 has no high voltage? Oh, yeah, this is the 0.82. Yeah, 0.82. Well, uh, when I worked at Dentron Radio for a short time, we used one ohm resistors carbon resistor. That'll work fine. Doesn't have to be 0.82. It's not that critical. But a 1 ohm resistor, 2 watt, that'll work in here too. Uh, don't use a wire wand. Yeah, not to do. There you go. Yeah, don't use a wire wand. See, he, he thought, he thinks like me. Uh, main tuning, black tuning insert. Okay, he paints it. Yeah, earlier painted metal insert. Now there's two versions of this. A metal one for the early version with a screw on the back, which is really nice. And then the plastic one which just gets kind of milky looking and that, you can kind of just rub that out with some uh, rubbing stuff and it'll, come, it'll turn black again. And by the way, Charles Talbot, uh, I just saw him, he was at the Collins uh, booth. Uh, he's still selling these inserts. You can buy the inserts, you know, for most of the major manufacturers. He makes, whoops, oh, I think I lost my pen. Oh, yeah, he makes these inserts. Go ahead, Mark. Oh, he uses a Sharpie, hmm, neat. Never thought about that. I use a paint stick or a paint uh, thing from the hobby store, but that's a good idea. See, I learned something there. You learn something every day in this stuff. Uh, eBay, okay, yeah, there's a lot of people selling front panels. I have a few front panels left for guys that have radios in. I have a few very rare. In fact, I just used my last MN2000, I believe. But I got new knobs and that, some of this. Tony Mills. He made, he had a lot of them. He, he doesn't have them anymore. No, he oh, okay. Tony Mills has shown up on the uh, Drake and Anti-Tube SWAT net now for two, three sessions. He's found some um, extra front panels, TR4Cs and a few others, tr 7 So if you're looking for a, a, a new panel, you might want to contact Tony Mills. His call is... Uh, KF8MW. Look him up on. Yeah, look him up on QRZ and. Uh, yeah, he hadn't said what he's asking for him. I I don't remember what he used to sell him for. Okay, but if you need it, you need it. His uh, TR7 panels are real nice. Nice, real dark. Uh, the uh, four line series. They made about four different color uh, variations in all the four line series. So. He found that out the hard way when he started making panels. Okay. Uh, buyer beware, yeah. Well, you never know. Um, there's all kinds of stuff out there. Sometimes you make out like a bandit. That's always a good idea. Feedback rating. I haven't bought off eBay in a long time. Oh, oh, we're done. Wow. You want me to? Okay. Yeah, I got no. Uh, I have uh, here, I have um, some stuff I did last year. While Jeff's loading the slides, his his stuff here. Let's do the uh, the the raffle. Um, it should have detected that as soon as you went in. Jeff's stuff. Okay, guys, let's do the uh, raffle while Jeff's getting set up. Okay. What was that? If anybody's looking for uh, some stickers, uh, uh, Ralph, AFAP dropped some of these off here. It says, this is Ham, not CB. It's Drake logoed. If you're interested in those, we'll leave them up here, and it's first come, first serve. We'll lay them up here with the uh, extra surveys. Let me get a couple for myself and Jeff. Okay, guys. Uh, let's... Uh, Hopefully, I'm, I'm not stacking the deck here or anything. 
Okay, first one. Let's do the plaque first. Oh, we can't do that. Maybe he's the winner. Okay, so let's... Um, okay, 758939. Um, okay, right there is the presentation. Okay, let's do, uh, this will be for a packet of pens. Let's just do the last three letters, or uh, numbers. Eight, six, one. Okay. Okay, uh, whoop, got two of them there. Eight, seven, two. Okay, um, got three more to go. Eight, seven, seven. Mark, hey, sorry, Mark, that's cheating. That's North Mark, I'm South Mark. Okay, we got a kid. Okay, next one, next to last is eight, eight, five. Eight, eight, five. What's your number? Oh, that, that'll have to do it right there. Okay, and the last one. Um, 885. What's your number, Mark? 877. Uh, just some past Drake pens. Hopefully they all work. They haven't dried up. <laughs> Okay. Hey, uh, who had the plaque here? We don't forget about that. Um, I have not been keeping the, uh, it might have been, uh, well, I'm not sure if it's him or not. Yeah, but the, 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 all those have just dropped. I know, I'm not. Okay, I think this will be the last one is 870. We're going to redraw, eight, no, oh, 870, right okay. Go ahead, Jeff. Yep. Okie dokie. Here we go. Um, we got to honor uh, Milt Sullivan. He was the one that uh, actually was Bob Drake's uh, right-hand man right about after uh, World War II. The big one, as Archie Bunker used to say. This is Milt here. And um, let me give you a quick uh, run-up. Uh, back in 99, when the uh, John Roloff Miller wrote the book uh, Family Affair, uh, I passed out about, well, I bought 30 of them right from John to help him get started on selling those books. Universal Radio, by the way, does have them, and they have them here. i got to buy a few more, in fact. Uh, but anyway, uh, I sent one uh, to Don, Don Tyrell, who's uh, W8 Alpha Delta, the Alpha Delta Switch Company. And there's a little info on that I'll show you here in a later. And uh, Milt Sullivan saw it, and his wife uh, wanted to find out where she could get a book, so I gave one to him. And ever since when uh, we've been pretty good friends. And uh, this is, uh, this is uh, I'm just going to go through this real quick because it's uh, something that everybody should know about. He made 86 cents in 1940, 1946. That was his uh, pay. Uh, pay uh, and uh, Bob Drake wasn't uh, real frugal. He was real frugal with the money. He didn't like to pay a lot of guys, but he was a good, uh, good man. And Milt uh, designed the 1A along with Bob Drake. First receiver, one of his favorites, of course, was the uh, the Drake 2B. Here he is with the Drake A line, this 1960s. There's Milt with Ron Waysong. Ron Waysong actually was uh, the guy that made the uh, C4 console. That was his baby. Kind of difficult to service. There's Milt with one of his uh, engineers, and this was his favorite radio, the Drake 2B, 2BQ. Absolutely. And unfortunately, I sold mine last year, but. Uh, There'll be other ones. I seen one yesterday at the flea market. And uh, Judy had sent me, uh, after Milt died, and I didn't realize he passed away, I got a phone call. And Judy says, you know, I got all his files here. Would you like them? I says, yeah, I'll take them. I says, how much you want for them? She says, nothing. I said, well, let me cover the shipping. I'll come down to where you're at and pick them up. She says, no. So uh, here they are at my house. 
and there's all his notes. They don't have the early 1A or the 2B stuff, but there's a lot of other stuff in here. And if you look real close, there's one here called the MN7500 and the MN5. And I'll show you quickly uh, uh, that he was working on a new tuner with uh, two roller inductors and everything else. He was also working in his QRP file. Uh, you notice the high power tube? That was in his QRP file. He was uh, working with manufacturers from Slitlana for uh, a big time amplifier, and we're talking big time. And uh, unfortunately, there's some other notes on this, but I figured you'd get a kick out of it, being it was in his QRP file. But he was a real stickler. Here's your uh, tank circuit for the, uh, the four line, the TR4 and the T4X transmitter. Everything was all handwritten notes and all hand done with Smith, Smith charts and all that. Look at all this stuff. This is the pre-selector for the R4C. All the calculations of the frequencies, the inductance, capacitance, all that engineering stuff that I don't know about. And this is how he uh, did stuff. This is how they did in the old days. Here's a TR4C relay, handwritten by Milt Sullivan. Really some neat, uh, neat stuff. The MN7, 2700 band switch. The breakdown voltages. He calculated everything down to the Nats, uh, the cat's, uh, cat's pajamas there. Uh, here's the L7 tank circuit specs. 1977, the L7 uh, Pi Network notes. Here's the L7 tank Q, the Q of the circuit. All uh, high detailed. It wasn't just grabbing a coil and throwing it in the radio or the amplifier. He calculated everything out. Here's your plate choke calculations. Uh, quite critical because you can get a lot of self resonance in an amplifier. In other words, if you just key the amplifier and start tuning the plate tuning and plate capacitance, it'll resonate and go crazy on you. Here's your plate choke specs for the L4B and uh, out of band specs. You have to meet the FCC specs back in the 70s, 1977 in particular. It was real critical. Here's your TR7 PA load effects on your power amplifier. And that's something all hand done. Uh, cooling fan specs. You'd say, well, gee whiz, just put a fan on the back of the radio. He calculated all the CFMs and what the fan cost. Here's your MN7500, which was going to come out in the 80s. Um, and uh, the knob settings, look at all that. I've got hundreds of these things, these Smith charts. I have no idea how to read one, but let me tell you, he's got tons of them in there. And I'm gonna, even the uh, counter dial, because uh, there was going to be uh, two crank dials on the MN7500. Oh, boy. Uh, he went to Merch and a few other companies. Hope you still hear me there. Here's the MN5 uh, 500 watt tuner, economy model, no watt meter. Uh, he retired in 83, stayed along for a while, and he was a consultant for his friend, Don Tyrell, who started Alpha Delta. I have big blueprints, real big, about the size of that, on the Alpha Delta four-position switch. Uh, big blueprints, there's a part of it, and you can see he calculated every detail. So if you want a good switch to switch your equipment, stick with Alpha Delta. There's some of his notes there with the Alpha Delta stuff. He also made a speaker that looked like a Drake 2B back in the, uh, in the uh, late 80s and uh, 90s. Uh, there's the VR, that's the schematic version of it, hand drawn, and knobs, the speakers, he calculated everything. Here's the specs for the speakers. Okay, just about out of time. Here's the uh, transorbs, and he died at age 85. How about that for close, okay. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, we got about five, six, seven minutes for some, a couple of quick questions. Everybody has a, okay, right there. I can't hear you because this, they, the air conditioner stirred up. We have this fan right up here. Yeah. Can you yell? What was the question? Unobtainium. No, you can't get them. Okay, uh, uh, go ahead. Some information. Okay, over in one of the big white tents next to where we have our booth, there's a guy selling uh, CD-ROMs over there, covers everything in the world. 
He has one for seven dollars. Has all it's the technical ma all technical manuals for all the Drakes that's been scanned in there for seven bucks. And I bought one. And they're great. Good deal. Uh, more questions? Yeah. Uh, it's probably one of the it's probably one of the transistors in there. Yeah, check your voltage. They have a listing on the TR6 of the voltages. That's uh, basically. Well, I don't know, but the crystals work themselves. Hmm. No, that's a tough one. I don't know. That is really a TR4 with a transverter in it, a TR6. Yeah. A what? Oh yeah. Do you have you gain all the way up? Have you, have you tried to crank it down a little bit? Yeah. Have you done any capacitor replacements or anything of that stuff? Oh, you have. That's all been done. Oh boy. Yeah. I don't know. I don't have an answer for that, unfortunately. Chirp on this T4XC. Yes. Good luck. <laughs> If it's a TR, early TR4, uh, Bob Tedford from Tedford Labs down in Cincinnati made a replacement for the, T, for the soup can filter for the TR3, TR4. Single one, they're hard to find, but you can find them. Uh, Bob Tedford, RT Labs, yeah. But uh, they're kind of hard to find. It's RT Labs. I met Bob Tedford. He looks like Bob Evans. You know the Bob Evans that we eat? He looks just like him, but he's long gone now. RT Labs. Yeah. Or Tedford Labs. And it, it's... It's a direct replace, or you can take another one out of a TR4 if it's a single one. If it's a dual, forget it, unless you, because the chassis has to be uh, modified for it. Get your nibbler tool out, you could do that. I don't, it's not worth it. Oh, who, uh, who was the first uh, winner that won the plaque? And we still have two unclaimed packets up here that have the Drake pens, uh, who hasn't come up yet? I tell you what, I'll stand right outside the door afterwards and you can come out there if, if, uh, if you're one of them. Okay. Who, who won the plaque again? Okay, meet you at the door. Uh, let's see, yeah, um, I think we got everything here. Don't forget the questionnaires. Oh, and one quick survey here, guys. Uh, somebody had uh, said that we could get a, a booth inside starting next year. Uh, you know, you got the Collins. I don't know if you guys have stopped by the Collins table inside. Any interest in, in that? Sort of hands. That's easier than, than shaking hands. Maybe we'll consider it. It's going to be expensive. I don't know if we'll, we'll do it or not, but at least we, we got 12 months to start thinking about it. Okay. Uh, just close the program down, I guess. Okay, guys. Thanks.